So I've been using the M4 iPad Pro as my main computer since it released two months ago and I'm absolutely in love with this piece of tech. Now yes, it is expensive and yes, there are some OS limitations, but once you figure out your workflow and what you wanna get done, this is completely unmatched. So what I'm gonna talk about in this video is five reasons why the M4 iPad Pro is the absolute best computer for me and it could be for you. But before we continue, definitely consider subscribing to the channel and becoming a channel member to get some awesome perks like these wallpapers and some live podcasts. But without further ado, let's talk about this M4 iPad Pro. Now, before we do get into this, I do want to acknowledge that yes, the iPad is on the expensive side at $1,300 for just the actual tablet itself before we even get into the accessories. So most of the time, if somebody comes to me and they need a recommendation for a computer and they maybe only have a $1,000 budget, I'm going to recommend nine out of 10 times some sort of MacBook Air variant. So, so that idea is not lost on me. I know that there's better kind of alternatives from a price point perspective for people that aren't willing to spend 18, 19, $2,000 on a tablet computer. So I just wanted to make that known. But once you do kind of take that plunge and jump full head first into the iPad Pro, the first thing and the first reason why I love the iPad Pro is how instantaneous the iPad Pro in its OS really is. Because yes, for better or for worse, at some points it is a blown up version of iOS and iOS has always been known to be extremely snappy. So the same thing now occurs with iPadOS and iPadOS 18. The iPad Pro, especially combined with the M4 chip, the ProMotion display with its 120 hz refresh rate, and also a 240 hertz sample rate makes everything move like butter. Apps open right away, multitasking works amazingly, you can jump in and out of applications without losing any data or having to reset that application. Everything just works so masterfully. It's very, very rare that you have to restart an application. And the beautiful part about restarting an application when it does happen is that when you restart it, A, you're not gonna lose any data because that RAM stays consistent, and B, it reopens right away with no data loss and it's as if no time has passed. So that does happen to me with time to time on LumaFusion where sometimes it freezes up or it chokes up. All I do is I quit out of it. Within two seconds, I'm right back in to the same exact timeline working off the same exact SSD on the same exact project. So the instantaneous nature of the the OS of the iPad Pro is definitely a big win for those people that just want to have things work immediately, right? You want to open up a Safari tab, Safari opens right away. You want to get into your notes, just pull out your Apple Pencil, tap on the screen, and you're into the Notes app, or you can just open the Notes app with your finger. If you just want to open up YouTube for a YouTube video, that also opens up right away. And then you, again, you can multitask with picture in picture, side by side, stage manager. So there's a lot of different things that are going in its favor from an instantaneous standpoint because everything just works right away. And that's something that is not the case for something like Mac OS. Mac OS has made some amazing strides with the M series of chips, but still opening an app on the iPad Pro is still much faster than opening up that same or an equivalent app on your M powered MacBook Air or MacBook Pro. So now the second reason why I love the M4 iPad Pro goes hand in hand with that instantaneous nature, and that has to be the display itself. Having that ProMotion display at 120 hertz with that sample rate of 240 hertz, combined with now that brand new tandem OLED tech, which gives you the deepest blacks possible while saving battery, while giving you some saturated, beautiful colors and getting bright enough because you have two layers of that OLED display is absolutely a game changer. Like the display alone, if the iPad Pro was just a portable display, I could see people charging a thousand to $1,500 purely for the display and using it as a secondary display on the move or on the go because it's that good, it's that color accurate, you can use it as a reference display, and it really is unmatched at this price point. There is a reason why back when we had the M2 and the M1 iPad Pros with that mini LED display, they moved the mini LED over to the MacBook Pros because the mini LED was that powerful and that amazing. And now that Apple is able to bring OLED to the M4 iPad Pro, the same thing is gonna happen because the displays on the iPad Pro is definitely like a, a guinea pig for Apple to see how these displays work as well as to see what kind of technical advancements they can make. And then they move it over to their MacBook Pro lineup as well. So having that tandem OLED display, having that brightness, having the ability to watch pretty much all types of content, whether it's content that's very bright or you're looking at notes on a white background, there's no blooming effect like we saw with the mini LED display. So there's zero complaints that I have with the display itself. It works amazingly well. Well, and now gaming at 120 hertz, once we start getting those AAA games in Apple Arcade, if there aren't any already, a lot of people at Apple are saying that it's now time for Apple to really step up on the gaming department, and I can see them doing that very soon. And I'm somebody who likes to maybe not game too hard, but also use my iPad as an external display for my Xbox. And if you guys want to find out how to do that, I'll leave that video linked down below because it's an awesome, nice little feature. So as you can tell with my voice and how I'm talking, you can tell that I'm extremely giddy about the M4 iPad Pro 
because it's just been a pleasure to use. It's fun to use, it makes me want to go back, it's efficient, I can get my work done, I can play games on it, and I can do everything that I would ever need to out of a computer on my iPad Pro. But one thing that was a sleeper for me, which is gonna be the third reason, is going to be that Apple Pencil Pro. Now I by no means am an artist, I am not getting into Procreate, I'm not drawing anything from scratch, I'm mostly taking notes, jotting down some thumbnail ideas to then eventually use it in Affinity Photo, but I do use my Apple Pencil a good amount, whether it is for things like note taking like I mentioned, or maybe using applications like Affinity Photo to create thumbnails. And again, when Apple released the Apple Pencil Pro, I was in the same camp as most people are, especially the people that are going to be in these comments, saying that the only thing that they added was this new squeeze functionality, right? The form factor was exactly the same. If anything, it was kind of on the negative side because you could not use it with older iPad Pros, which is a big shame. But again, the Apple Pencil Pro, just with that squeeze functionality alone and the haptic feedback that you get out of that squeeze functionality is absolutely amazing. It's, it's kind of baffling how Apple is able to create this haptic feedback to give you the sensation that you're holding maybe a real pencil or have some real resistance. And not only that, but some of the trickery that they play with software, like in the notes application, when you have certain pen tools being used, like a regular pen or maybe a calligraphy pen, the shadows that are there, the resistance, the reaction, the haptics, everything just feels very tight and concise. So now that I'm looking at it, I'm surprised that Apple didn't charge us $200 for this Apple Pencil, especially because they still sell the Apple Pencil 2. So I'm not going to go out and say you need an M4 iPad Pro just to experience the Apple Pencil Pro, because unfortunately if you don't have an M2 iPad Pro, which is my only gripe, you still cannot use the Apple Pencil Pro. But if you have the opportunity to go to an Apple store and just test out the Apple Pencil Pro, then you'll understand what I'm saying. Because as I'm saying, I don't use it for much more than just note taking and playing around in the notes app. But for people who are designers and can really fully take advantage of it, especially with the new gyroscope in there as well, to give you different like physical touch points of the Apple Pencil on the software itself has been mind blowing. So the Apple Pencil Pro does go up there as a best accessory in my opinion for the M4 iPad Pro, even more so than the Magic Keyboard. The Magic Keyboard is awesome in its own right, but you can always buy a third party Bluetooth keyboard or something like that to give you maybe 90% of the experience. But as of right now, there is no third party manufacturer that makes anything close to the Apple Pencil Pro. And now let's talk about the M4 iPad Pro superpower. And this is probably a superpower for most iPads in the entire lineup and it has to be the versatility. So of course, when you buy an iPad, it is a tablet first and foremost, it is a touch first interface first and foremost, and it's, again, easy to use in that manner, but all of a sudden slap a magic keyboard on there, it becomes your computer replacement. You know, use your Apple Pencil Pro or any Apple Pencil, it turns into a digital note-taking device, into a digital canvas, you're able to use your Apple Pencil in multiple different functions and functionalities. So the versatility of the iPad Pro, both from a hardware standpoint physically, is unmatched in my personal opinion, right? There are Surface Pros out there, but Again, I feel like the Surface Pro and those types of computers are desktop operating systems just trying to fit into an iPad form factor, and it's a little wonky. At the end of the day, you only use it as a laptop. You don't really use it in that tablet mode. But when you go over to the iPad Pro, it can be used in multiple different facets by multiple different people in a bunch of different industries. And then that's not even taking into account the versatility of the OS. Of course, I edit all of my videos in LumaFusion on the iPad Pro using an external SSD. I use Affinity Photo for all my thumbnails. I use WordPress to write all my articles for the website. So from a work and business standpoint, I use my iPad Pro for everything. Then you go to the personal side, right? I manage all my personal finances on there, all the stuff around the house. I have my calendar, both professionally and personal wise. So it manages my entire life as well. And if I keep going, you can watch YouTube on it, Netflix, it is a media machine. The speakers on them are very loud and bassy. And then you can also game on it. You can use your Xbox or PlayStation controller to connect to it via Bluetooth. You can play games from Apple Arcade like NBA 2K if you want. You can play a bunch of different games directly from the App Store as well as from Apple Arcade with a bunch of AAA titles looming apparently. Again, I'm not a big gamer to begin with, but I do love playing my sports games. I'm really hoping that some way, somehow, NCA 25 gets released on Apple Arcade or on the iPad Pro. I would spend an additional like $70 just to have that game on my iPad Pro, but to each their own. And then like I mentioned earlier in the video, you can turn your iPad Pro into a dummy display with a couple of different accessories or even using things like sidecar. So if you're using your iPad as a supplementary computer or a supplementary device to your current MacBook Pro or MacBook Air, you can also do that as well and take full advantage of the iPad Pro and its display. So the versatility for me, it's unmatched. It is the iPad Pro superpower. You can use it as a computer, as a tablet, as a digital note-taking device, as a media consumption device, as a game console, as a gaming display. The list kind of goes on and on, and I want to get some people in the comments kind of letting me know how they use their iPad Pro on a day-to-day -day basis. Is it the more conventional, you know, Magic Keyboard, Apple Pencil, computer-like setup, or is it something more unique? Because I know there's a lot of people in a lot of different functions using the iPad Pro in different ways. And then last but not least, I want to combine performance and battery life into the last category because 
It's been absolutely amazing. Now, I'm not a big benchmark guy. I'm not going to sit there and give you the Geekbench scores. I'm not going to compare it to last year's model. I'm not going to try to squeeze out a little bit of power by throwing this thing in the freezer while it runs like Cinebench scores and things like that, because that's not real day-to-day -day activity and not real day-to-day -day use. But overall, I have seen a night and day difference. Now, I'm coming from an M1 iPad Pro entry level to the M4 iPad Pro with one terabyte and 16 gigs of RAM. So on paper, I should be seeing a substantial increase in performance overall, and I have been. My videos that I reuse in 4K 30 with a bunch of different files and a bunch of different layers of music and audio as well as video, it's exporting probably twice as fast as it used to out of LumaFusion. My thumbnails are also rendering pretty much in real time now at this point. Every game and every application that I throw on my iPad Pro, even while using iPadOS 18 beta, has been running it super smoothly without heating up, without getting overextended. And what's been most impressive is the battery life. Now this could be recency bias because most computers or laptops or tablets that you buy or iPhones, when you first buy them, the battery life is gonna be great. And over the first two months, my battery life has been amazing, getting nine, 10, even 11 hours of actual screen on time with some intense work. Like I'm not just watching video on here or surfing Safari, I'm editing video with external SSDs while actually exporting and uploading to YouTube. So I'm using a lot of the internals of the iPad Pro and getting nine hours of battery life, no problem. That is something that I could not say about my M1 iPad Pro. Towards the end of my life with the M1 iPad Pro, I had that thing for almost three years and I was getting maybe four hours of screen on time with using some intensive tasks. Performance and battery life, in my opinion, this is the best tablet on the market for it and one of the best computers on the market for it. I know that the MacBook Airs have amazing battery life in their own right. That's why I have one behind me as a just in case. But again, my M4 iPad Pro is my main computer for all things. So those are my five reasons as to why my M4 iPad Pro experience has been absolutely next level. As I mentioned in the very beginning, I am not blind to the fact that this OS and this system and this hardware combination is for everybody, right? That's why there's a bunch of different computers out there that you can choose from. Maybe you're even like a Windows person or you like to use Android tablets or maybe your workflow needs some sort of application that just isn't in the app store. And for the, when that happens, yeah, go for the computer that makes the most sense for you. But for me, the M4 iPad Pro has made the most sense for my workflow, what I use it for, how much fun I have with it, the versatility of it, how I'm able to use it for, again, like I said, my work machine, but then also just give it to my daughter to play around and have her like color with Bluey and different applications, right? Not every computer on the market has that capability and that versatility. And then of course, if you go with the whole ecosystem, you know, $1,300 on an iPad Pro, 350 on a Magic Keyboard, another 130 on the Apple Pencil Pro, maybe you wanna up the internal storage to one terabyte, you know, you're spending $2,000. You know, $2,000 better give you a good computer. For me, it does, and it could for most people, as long as you know what your intentions are with the iPad Pro. So what I recommend doing is, if you're on the fence, right? If you're on the fence between getting a regular laptop and getting an iPad Pro, buy the iPad Pro. Apple has a great return policy. They'll give you 14 days, no questions asked. And then if you can't figure your workflow out within those 14 days, then yeah, go back, return everything, jump on a MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro for your workflow. And then at that point, you'll know like, hey, you gave the iPad Pro a shot. But I know that for more and more people, as the more that I talk to them, the iPad Pro is being able to fit their needs more and more because everybody's working with more data in the cloud, so they don't really need that kind of stuff. Most applications now have some sort of App Store version, if not a full-fledged version in the App Store. So there's, of course, some outliers out there that cannot use the iPad Pro for day-to-day, -day, but for most people, I think we can make it work, and it's just a lot more fun. But that's gonna do it for this video. If you made it to the end, I know it's a little bit of a long one. Leave a little dolphin in the comments down below and leave a comment down below about what you think. Is the iPad Pro something that you could use? Do you guys use any sort of iPad as a main computer? Or do you have to stick with the traditional desktop solution like a MacBook Air or a Mac Pro or an iMac because that's just what you're used to or that's what your actual job entails? Let me know with a comment down below. I'm excited to talk about this and have this discussion in the comments. But for me, M4 iPad Pro has been the way to go and hopefully it is for you as well. But that'll do it, everybody. If you wanna watch more videos like this one, YouTube thinks you're gonna like this video right here. And if not, I picked this video right here for you to check out. But that'll do it, everybody. Until next time, I'm Fernando. I love the iPad Pro. Peace.